Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel if you're new here and today I'm going to be sharing some exciting and scary news all at the same time and that is that we are proceeding with IVF which stands for in vitro fertilization. And I'm just going to talk all about that today, my feelings about it, AJ's feelings, the science behind it, and all of that jazz. So buckle up and let's just get started. I'm going to do a quick summary of our trying to conceive story in case anyone is new here. Me and my husband are both 26 years old. We got married in 2019 and we decided to start trying for kids at the age of 25. That's just always kind of the age that we had in mind. So 25 rolls around. I get off the birth control pill two months before my 25th birthday because I thought that would be plenty of time to regulate my body, which I regret not doing that sooner. But nevertheless, we are unsuccessful have never got a positive pregnancy test. We try for about 10 months before I seek diagnostic testing and treatment. I went straight to a fertility specialist and he ran a bunch of tests on me, an SIS, an HSG, all types of different tests, genetic testing to see if AJ and I are carriers for any diseases that we should be aware of. And for the most part, things came back looking pretty good and pretty normal. I would say the only, the only glaring things are that my left fallopian tube could potentially be blocked. The test was inconclusive, but based on the results, there is a good chance that it is blocked and that does seem to be my dominant side when I'm ovulating. So every month your body switches from the left side to the right side. Basically they will usually take turns. I feel like my left one is the dominant one based on my IUI cycles. Besides that I do have the MTHFR gene mutation. That just means my body cannot process folic acid properly. So I'm on a medication for that. I had slightly elevated cholesterol so I've been working on eating clean. But other than that Everything else looks great and there's no true reason why we shouldn't be conceiving naturally. As for AJ, everything came back normal as well with his sperm, high sperm count, motility, morphology, everything was great, but he did have a slight DNA fragmentation, but again, nothing. Like basically our doctor was like, you guys should conceive naturally given enough time. So we decided to try for a couple more months. AJ was on a supplement that my doctor recommended. I'm on my medication for my gene mutation. And for the next, I would say three or four months, nothing happened obviously. So then we decided to go back in for a consult at which point my doctor said that IVF would be our best chance at having a baby fast, quickly. And I said, whoa, 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 we're not ready for that. Let's try IUI or medicated cycles. And IUI is an intrauterine insemination, basically the turkey baster method. So we did, we went straight to IUI. We didn't bother doing any medicated cycles. Straight into IUI, we did two of them. They were unsuccessful. And my last IUI was actually quite traumatic for me if you've been watching the vlogs. Terrible side effects and cramping, debilitating cramping that ruins my whole day. A faint positive on a pregnancy test which turned out not to be positive at all so it was just a whirlwind of emotions. I can't keep putting myself through that. So we're going straight into IVF after IUI number two. I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions, but I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering why don't we do a third IUI? Because typically what people will do is they'll do three medicated cycles of letrozole or Clomid, which are drugs that stimulate ovulation. Then they'll do three IUIs, which is the drug that stimulates ov ovulation plus the insemination before they do IVF. We just decided that this was the right time for us, which I'll get into more later, but I just cannot, you guys, I just cannot. I'll get, I, I think I'll just get into that later, but I'm gonna explain what IVF is uh, for those who maybe watch my channel who are not going through infertility. I know that I am always so curious about people going through infertility. Even in high school and college, I was watching vlogs of people going through IVF and I don't even know why. It's just always something that intrigued me and it's so surreal for me to be sitting on the other side of the camera because I never thought I would be on YouTube. I never thought I would be doing IVF. So this is a very like crazy moment for me. But anyways, so IVF is where they stimulate my body to produce many, many, many eggs between 10 and 
40 eggs can be retrieved from a female body. Everyone is different, so it's impossible to predict how many eggs I will have, but I do have a high AMH level, which is an indicator that I am going to hopefully respond well to the medications and hopefully get 20 or more eggs. Every month, a woman ovulates one egg, so with IVF, they're giving me lots of injections every single day that I have to inject myself, and that will stimulate my body to produce many, many eggs. My ovaries will swell up to the size of small clementines or softball size, depending on how my body reacts to the medication, so it's very intensive process. It's not something that people take lightly. It's very expensive, which I'll get into. And overall, it's just a very big deal, hence the dedicated video. So the process starts by me taking two weeks of birth control to regulate my hormones, get me at a baseline. Then I do a baseline ultrasound, which just checks that my uterus looks good, no cysts or anything growing that shouldn't be there. If that looks good, then I will get all of my medications. I'll have several injections every single day for most likely 10 to 14 days. So about two weeks, give or take, of nightly injections. During those two weeks, I will go into the office most likely every other day to be monitored to see how big and how many follicles I have. The follicle is what grows the egg and then the egg gets released from the follicle. So once I am near the end of those injections, they give me medication to prevent ovulation because imagine they're stimulating my body to produce 20 eggs, 30 eggs, 40 eggs, and if my body naturally ovulates those eggs, that could be kind of crazy. So we are not allowed to have intercourse during that time for obvious reasons because we cannot risk having 20 babies fertilized inside of me, that'd be crazy. So they give me medications to basically control all of that. There'll be a trigger shot of HCG, and then 36 hours later, I will go under anesthesia for an egg retrieval. So it's a surgery. They put you in like a twilight sleep, so it's not heavy anesthesia, but you are basically knocked out. They will go in and aspirate the eggs basically with a suction, some kind of suction. I have to look into that because I'm curious how it actually works, but they go in and they suck out all of the eggs. It's a quick procedure, about 30 minutes, but it can be a rough recovery depending on how your body responds. At that point, they will tell me how many eggs they were able to get. Um, again, I'm hoping for 20 or more. That would be amazing, but there's no way to know. So for the sake of this example, let's say I get 20 eggs. That does not mean that I'm going to have 20 embryos. So let's say I have 20 retrieved eggs, but only 15 of them are actually mature. That basically means that five of the eggs are not good. So we're down to 15. Then they take AJ sperm and we're doing ICSI, which is where they take one single sperm and they inject it into every single egg. So they choose the healthiest looking sperm. So we have 15 mature eggs that they fertilize and then the next day they will let us know how many of those eggs actually successfully got fertilized. Let's say this number drops down to 10. And this is a very common progression. So even though you have so many eggs, you actually will probably not end up with too many embryos. Okay, so we're down to 10 fertilized embryos. Then they have to let them grow for five to six days. So day two, day three, day four, they're calling us with updates. Let's say we lose two. Two of them just fail to progress for whatever reason. So now we're down left with eight fertilized day five blastocysts. At this point, you have the option to do PGT testing, which is a biopsy of those tiny little blastocysts. Biopsy gets sent to the lab and that will tell you with the 95% accuracy, the gender of the embryo and also the genetic makeup of the embryo. So if something is chromosomal, chromosomally, chromosomally abnormal, or let's say that blastocyst will not have a chance at life for whatever reason, it looks abnormal in some way, they will give you that information. So from our eight blastocysts, let's just say that four of them are genetically, genetically, can I speak? Genetically normal. So we have four, okay. Four genetically normal, four genetically abnormal. This is where it gets a little bit dicey and I will get into that later. But basically at this point, you get to decide which embryo you are going to implant into your body. There's about six weeks of preparation for transfer, which is where they put the embryo inside of me. So it's a very long process and you choose, normally you choose the most healthy, best looking embryo that you have. So hopefully, you know, everything goes well, you transfer it in and then five days later you can take a pregnancy test 
and see if it worked. The rest of your embryos go into the freezer where you can store them indefinitely. There have been studies where frozen embryos have been successfully implanted 30 years later with successful pregnancies. So as you can see from 20 eggs, you probably only end up with a handful, if that, of healthy embryos. Even if you transfer a healthy, perfect embryo, there's still a big chance that it's unsuccessful. So even if we had four healthy embryos, that does not mean I'm going to have four children. This is a very unknown process. My doctor has high success rates, so I'm you know, banking on that, but there's just no guarantee with IVF. This is not a surefire way to have children. This is not a guarantee at all. And we are going to, into this process with eyes wide open. Some people go through IVF and they have no embryos at all, whether they're genetically normal or not, they just don't end up with any. So the fact that we could potentially end up with embryos is a miracle in and of itself. So I just wanna make that clear. I feel like social media and just things in general make it seem like IVF is just like 100% guarantee and that is far from true. If I don't get enough eggs, we have to start all over. <laughs> If we don't get any embryos, we have to start all over. And each each IVF cycle costs about $30,000, which is where insurance plays a big role, at least in our story. AJ got a job, a new job about a year ago. And the first thing I asked was, does he have fertility benefits? And the fact that he did was just like, I had a weird gut feeling that this was gonna be something that we needed to use in the future. Not only does he have fertility coverage, but he has one of the best ones out there through Progeny. And basically they will cover up to three egg retrievals and a handful of embryo transfers. If you decide to do IUIs, that eats up at that benefit. So the fact that we did two IUIs kind of ate up at some of that coverage, but we should still have enough coverage to do one or two cycles of IVF. That's also part of the reason why we decided to go straight to IVF and not do a third IUI because IUI chance of success is only 10% and we didn't feel like that was worth it to eat up more of our insurance coverage when we needed that for IVF. We are so, 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 so blessed and grateful to have this coverage. I do not know if we would be doing IVF at this point in our journey if we didn't have that. And I'm just being totally transparent. We are on month 17 of trying to conceive. And I know people wait many, many years before doing IVF because it's an intense process, like I told you, it's also very expensive, so a lot of people have to save up for years. And I just wanna make it known that I do not take a moment of this for granted. I thank God every day for this coverage, and I, I have a feeling that he gave it to us because he knew we were gonna need it. A question that I imagine I'm going to get is why so soon? And that question is very subjective because soon, to me, is very different from soon or too fast for you. I am a very type A go-getter, planning, meticulous person. When we started trying to conceive, there was no, oh, let's just see if it happens. Like to me, it's either you're, you're trying or you're not trying. And once I entered into that trying mentality, there was no going back. There was no relaxing for me. I wish I could say differently, but unfortunately that's just how my brain works. If I could go back, I wish I could just have started that process a little more loosely, a little less rigid, not putting so much pressure on myself, but it is what it is. It happened the way it happened and I can't take that back. The moment I started trying, I was obsessed with it, started ovulation tracking right away. So to me, these 17 months have felt like three years, um, but if I would have had like a year of just trying but not trying, then maybe I would have been two, three years of TTC before doing IVF, but that's just not how it ended up being for me, and I don't think that makes it wrong in any way. There's this, if you're in the TTC world, you know the standards or the basic protocol. Medicated cycles, IUI, and then IVF, and usually that's a two year process. So we are definitely six months ahead of the game in terms of the typical TTC timeline for some people. If you're looking at me and judging me for doing it too soon, my advice would be to get out of this mainstream idea of life. Life is what you make it and we don't have to follow specific guidelines or rules if we don't feel like they're right for us. You know in your heart when it's the right time to do something or to wait and if you can break free from the cage or the shackles that society puts you under, you will have such a better life and you will feel so much more in control and feel like you can do what you want to do. So that's exactly what AJ and I are doing.
We feel this is the right move for us. We've been praying about this for so long, even before we started IUI. Like I said, I had this gut feeling, this, I think everyone kind of has the fear that they're secretly infertile. Um, so I, I'm not unique in that, but I did have that gut feeling of like, I have a feeling we're gonna do IVF. I don't know how to explain it. So anyways, let's get into some spirituality because I am a Christian and I would say that I am a pretty serious Christian. I'm not lukewarm in any way. I consider myself non-denominational. My family is super, super Christian, like grew up in a Christian home, went to a Christian school. We went to church every Sunday. We, we talked about the Bible almost every night at dinner. I consider myself to be a good Christian and I know that this video is going to be controversial and I just want to say no negativity, rude comments, or blasphemy, frankly, will be allowed on this page. If you comment something like that in the comments, you will be blocked and deleted. Um, I may turn the comments off depending on how people react. So that is my little disclaimer. Anyways, I've been praying for guidance in this journey for many, many months before we even got to this stage of actually deciding to do IVF. And I prayed, Lord, have your will in this journey. If you do not want us to get to that point of doing IVF, you have to speak to us in some way because I'm going to follow the trajectory of where these treatments take me, which is eventually IVF, which is where we are now. So I said, Lord, if you have a different plan for me, if you want me to wait it out or do it naturally or some other way, make it clear to me, speak to me. Praying that literally for months, probably five to six months at this point. And it's so crazy because last night, yesterday was the official call on IUI number two, beta came back zero. I had my crazy cramping episode and I went to prayer night because Friday nights there's prayer night and this one was held at my parents' house, which is very rare. So I went to prayer night and I specifically asked God, Lord, if you do not want me to move forward with IVF, let me know, do something, take it away from me, make something happen. But if I don't hear from you that you are against me doing this, then I'm going to proceed. And um, without getting into specifics, it was a Pentecostal prayer night and I feel like I got my answer and I'm not gonna get into it, but <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I take this seriously. This is not a willy nilly decision that I made. I do feel like God is on my side. <sighs> I just, this is weird for me to talk about because I know people are gonna freak out over this. I am probably not gonna share details of our embryos, what we decide to do with them, how we decide to treat our embryos. Everyone has different views on this. Some people are against PGT testing. Some people are for it. Some people will transfer every single embryo into the body. Some people will not. I am probably going to keep that private. I'm not sure. Again, it depends how you guys react to this. If I'm being attacked, I will definitely keep it private. <sighs> This whole thing just weighs me down. The The thought of like people, I don't know. I don't know. There's just so many opinions out there on embryos and I totally get it. And I've been searching for the past six months for the right answer. And I feel like I got my answer. You may have a different conviction than I do, but as for me and my family, this is the right decision. For those who are genuinely curious where I stand, like specifically, maybe I'll do a podcast on it. It's just such a touchy subject that I, I don't even know if that's gonna be useful or if it's just gonna cause chaos. For those of you who are not religious, you are probably like, what is the big deal here? And to you, you can just ignore that. I completely forgot what else I was gonna say in this video. I feel like I did not do a good job at explaining that. I'm just being, I, I'm normally like not afraid of being judged. Like I do not care what people think about me, but this one like really, really scares me. I also want to say, if you feel the need to judge me or anyone else for that matter on anything, consider the fact that you don't know what you would do if you were in my position. You don't know how you would react. You, you just don't know until you're in that position. So I just ask for empathy and grace and just neutrality. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I'll do the same if I ever run into you in real life and I don't agree with your decision, I will just simply say, all right. Anyways, um, so we are starting that pretty soon. I'm gonna be starting birth control. In the next couple of days, I'm still waiting on my period to come because literally yesterday, 
was my beta. So like this is all in real time. Everything's gonna be in real time. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do when it comes to embryo transfer. That might be a little bit delayed, but I'm basically gonna be a TDC influencer now, but my regular content will still be involved. It'll basically be how it's been for the last year where I share a lot of this journey and I also share other parts of my life. So I also wanna share a thought that I have, which is that when people tell me to just wait a little bit longer, just give it another year, what that says to me is you know what you need Rachel you need a little bit more suffering you need to suffer for at least another year before you do IVF and that I know that's not the intention with what is being said but that is the vibe going through infertility is one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life if not the hardest I haven't decided yet and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I really really wouldn't and if you've never been through it I just ask you to try to empathize and before you say that to someone in your life Just think of of how that could be perceived. So that's just something I wanted to put out there Everybody's timeline is different and I think the people who try naturally for multiple years are saints like literal saints and they have patience and they have strength and some of us, we can't make it that long. And I don't think that's wrong. I just think we're all created differently. We all have different strengths. My strength is getting things done and I wanna be a mom and I've been blessed with this insurance and I don't know where we're gonna be next year. I don't know what job AJ is gonna have. You never know what's gonna happen. All I know is that God has gifted us this amazing insurance and our deductible is running out or we're approaching the end of the year and if you live in the USA, you know that you have a deductible. Ours is $4,000, our out of pocket max is $8,000. So basically, if we wait till next year, we have to pay another $8,000. So all of these things just lining up for us to start now, I don't think it's a coincidence. So yeah, a lot of word vomit today. I just kind of wanted to get out all of my thoughts on this and let you guys know what the plan is. I'm excited, but this is also not necessarily a happy video because it is extremely emotional and it's a grieving process that you have to go through to realize that you're not gonna conceive your first child naturally. There's literally no chance of me conceiving naturally unless I decide not to do IVF, obviously. As of right now, I'm starting medications soon and that will be it. Like our first baby will most likely be conceived via IVF and I have to accept that and mourn that it didn't happen naturally. And that may seem silly, but it's there's so much that gets taken away in this process, the surprise element, just not dreading taking a pregnancy test, the surprising your husband, the surprising your family, the surprising you guys, all of that is stripped away and it makes the process very medical and hospital-like and there's no, I don't wanna say there's no joy, but a lot of the joy is sucked out of intimacy, even with your husband and there's just so much heaviness that comes with this decision and it's not all fun and games. It's actually mostly not fun and games. Like it's very hard. It's gonna be a big toll on my body, injecting myself with all of those hormones. I'm gonna be bloated, I'm gonna be fatigued. It's not gonna be easy. And I feel like I grieved that already. So yeah, I'm gonna be an IVF mom, which is crazy. It is actually crazy. I don't think I've actually fully accepted that. And I, I wanna break the stigma of IVF. I feel like and I'm guilty of this too, looking at IVF families and thinking that's weird. The fact that they did that, that's weird. The fact that they couldn't conceive naturally and that they decided to take the egg and the sperm and put them together in a Petri dish, that's weird. That is not weird, you guys. That is a couple hurting and wanting to grow their family. And unless you've experienced that, you just do not have a right to comment. You just do not, you do not. Also, because this is a big stigma, IVF kids are just like normal kids. <laughs> It's a sperm and an egg meeting and they are beautiful children and they are just like regular conceived children with the same same rate of potential defects. Like there is no weirdness about that. If any part of you thinks that, there's no shame because I, part of me in the past used to think that and I just wanna say that we can grow as people and learn and realize things and say, wow, I thought this, but it's actually not true. And we can change our worldview on things. We are not stuck 
in a certain mentality. Anyways, I love you guys so much. God loves you so much and I'm excited for this journey. Uh, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I've been posting a lot of TikToks on TTC because the community over there is just amazing and um, real time stories on Instagram. So with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.